So what if more expensive iPhones are coming, even if Apple thinks they're justified? As yes, we get details of the possible iPhone 15 price hike, and it doesn't look too friendly for your pocket. Samsung's changes for the Galaxy S24 include something you might not want to return to, and it seems OnePlus has a foldable coming later than expected as delays begin to surface. I'm Jaime Rivera, here we are, don't worry. We haven't gone anywhere, jet lag has just been the worst. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today is non-existent, so let's start today's video with OnePlus because it seems like we'll have to wait longer for their foldable. The OnePlus Open, or whatever the final name will be, was supposed to be unveiled on August 28th, according to Max Jamber. However, it is now reported that the company had to change its plans and push the launch. The new date isn't known yet, and apparently a last minute change in the screens of the foldable was the main reason for the delay. The Open was expected to use BOE panels, but it seems like if, uh, well, there was an issue with that, uh, which resulted in OnePlus switching over to Samsung panels. Originally, the phone was expected to be based on the Oppo Find N2 design as well, but it won't be the case since apparently it'll be different when it comes to the panels. Apparently everything's gonna be larger. Now as for the specs, 6.3 inch AMOLED cover screen with a full HD plus resolution at 120 hertz. And then the main LTPO panel is 7.8 inches diagonal with 120 hertz refresh rate and 32 megapixels on the selfie camera. It will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 paired with 16 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of storage. It is also reported it'll share the same camera features of the OnePlus 11 but with an extra 64 megapixel telephoto camera, and we're trying to figure out what the extra means. Finally, it'll use a 4800 milliamp hour battery and support 67 watt fast charging because it is OnePlus, it's coming with the territory. We'll see how that goes. Now let's talk about Apple because there is new information about the M3 powered Macs that could arrive in the future. Mark Gurman reported that it is a sure thing that the M3 version of the Mac mini is eventually coming. However, it seems that it's still far in development as the machine is not expected to emerge until late 2024 at the earliest and will not be the first in the series of M3 Macs. And as for what's coming, well, the report mentions that the first device powered by the M3 chip is most likely gonna be the 13 inch MacBook Pro and 13 inch MacBook here. Apparently that MacBook Pro is still going to be here, which uh, could launch as early as October. After the launch, we would have to wait until Q2 of next year to see the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models that are expected to feature the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips. And finally, we hear that the M3 chip is fabricated using TSMC's three nanometer process for significant performance and power efficiency improvements compared to the five nanometer M2, which is already legendary. Uh, that's gonna sound crazy. Now let's talk about Samsung since we have a ton of new information about the Galaxy S24 series. Let's start with the bad news that are not necessarily terrible. It is reported that the next phones will stick with the same selfie cameras as the current ones. And while well, the report comes from the Galaxy Club, which claims that Samsung will use the same 12 megapixel selfie camera from the previous lineup, meaning that any possible camera improvements will come from software optimizations. Now buckle up because the next is uh, the really bad news. A few days ago, we talked about the specifications of the upcoming Galaxy S23 FE, and stay with me because it has to do with the S24. And uh, well, we mentioned that some of the regions would get a version powered by the Exynos chip. Well, now we hear that Samsung is also exploring returning to Exynos in some regions for the Galaxy S24, with Europe named as the most prominent market. The report also highlights how Samsung acknowledges that the processors of its competitors are better than its own. However, it still makes sense for them to stay in the business to keep themselves independent in case they need to. We mentioned Europe as the market that would get Exynos, but there are also other reports claiming that the company would make this experiment in smaller markets, which actually would make sense. Finally, we also have new details about the rest of the specs. The new series just got its first geek Bench result, which uh, revealed that the battery capacity of the Plus and the Ultra models are going to be, in the case of the Plus, 4775 milliamp hours, and in the case of the Ultra, 4855, which usually gets rounded up anyways. The results also show that the new series is equipped with a chip code named Pineapple, which is speculated to also be the Snapdragon 8 Gen, what, 3? Uh, let me know how you'd feel about Exynos coming back in the comments. 
And finally, for the most interesting news today, let's talk about Apple and uh, talk about the iPhone 15 series because uh, we have new details about what to expect and uh, it's not necessarily good. According to a new report by Bloomberg, Cupertino plans to increase its overall revenue by uh, raising the price of the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, despite the projected decline in the overall smartphone market. This isn't the first time we've heard reports about Apple raising the prices since uh, we also heard Jeff Pooh predicting that uh, the price hike was coming. Back in May, we heard a rumor claiming that since iPhone 15 and 15 Plus will gain a number of features currently exclusive to the pros, such as Dynamic Island and the 48 megapixel primary camera, Apple seems even more eager to separate the pro and the non-pro devices in terms of pricing. Mac rumors reported that uh, we could see $100 in price increase with the iPhone 15 Pro, and then the Pro Max could be between $100 and $200 more expensive than the current model, meaning that the iPhone 15 Pro could start at $1099 and its bigger sibling $1299. And uh, if you're wondering what changes uh, we're expecting for this price, well, we hear of a titanium frame, which is stronger and lighter than stainless steel. The Pro Max model is then reported to include a periscopic zoom lens that could enable up to 6x optical zoom. And uh, we're also hearing USB-C, the A17 bionic chipset fabricated by TSMC's 3 nanometer node, and thinner bezels all around but in today's question let us know i mean do you think that the price hike is fair because listen in my case i feel that conventional smartphones as they are are too expensive period i mean seriously when foldables are in some cases less expensive it makes no sense but that's just me leave us a comment down below we'd love to know your opinion and apologies for the thunderstorm it's really bad Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me uh, succumb to jet lag because it's part of the show. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.